morning. Good morning. Hey, Ryan. Hi. Hey, good morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. How are y'all? We're doing well, thank you. So, Ryan, this is, I'm Erica. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm the one that called you yesterday. So, just so that you can put some um, faces with the names. And then Dr. Beecher is the one male there. You may or may not recognize <laughs> him. This is Rebecca. Yeah, I can't forget him. <laughs> hey, Ryan. Likewise. Rebecca's one of the stroke coordinators. And then all of those girls there, I'll let you introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Lindsay. I was um, one of the nurses that took care of you during your procedure. I'm Caroline. I'm one of the nurses. Caitlin, I'm one of the nurses. Shelby, I'm the tech that took care of you. Thank you all. Hey, Ryan, do you have anybody sitting there with you? No, I'm here by myself this morning. Okay. Well, we'd love to see your face if you want to show it. <laughs> but you don't have to. That's a lot of pressure. Um, <laughs> Thank you for doing this. If it's okay with you, we're going to record it. Um, because like I was telling you yesterday, I don't know if you got that, um, the link, but they have a um, Instagram page and TikTok. Hey! Hi! Better. Yay! Um, and so, Are you okay with them recording this? Yes, ma'am. So thank you for doing this. Every once in a while, if we have a really good case and we remember the person and they all remember you, um, we like to kind of catch up and see how things are going. And you were one of the people that they took care of this year that really stood out and they remember your case very well. Lindsay was there, Dr. Beecher was there. I mean, you know this, I don't know how much you recall, but it all happens really, really fast. And from before to after the thrombectomy, you were, it, it was a huge change. So life changing yes, actually. So um, it's fun to kind of regroup and see how you're doing. And then for us to be able to answer any of the questions that you've got. I'm doing good. Um, I went back to work in December. I had the heart arrhythmia or the um, ablation surgery in December. Um, I went back to work the 18th of December, so we had the stroke on September 3rd, yep. so I was back to work in three months. Um, awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Um, very little residual, a little bit of short-term memory loss here and there. Um, every once in a while, stumble up on a word or two, getting in a hurry, speaking. Other than that, I really don't have anything. Um, awesome. I'm very lucky. Yeah, well, I mean, in you addition really to that, like out. not in addition to that, with your brain, I mean, your ejection fraction has improved. You had an ablation, and tell them what your ejection um, fraction was in September and what it is now. Uh, what it, it was actually in December, it was fifty nine point eight, right at uh, sixty. Like, yeah. what was it? Like twenty five, thirty? Yeah, twenty five. Wow. So, awesome. um. I, it was there's been a lot of stuff that went right and a lot of miracles that happened that night to get things where they are today yeah and you worked hard yeah i, I don't know where i'd be without y'all thank you it's our pleasure uh so you really stick out to me and i talk about you all the time um so one of the things that we use to identify patients having strokes is this application called Viz AI. And uh, because you were at another hospital, uh, normally before that application existed, they would have to do your scans, have their radiologist look at the scans, find the problem, and then call us. And that used to take like hours, hours, like an hour or two hours, something like that before they would even tell us about the patient. But because of this uh, application that we got uh, and we use and we as it, we get your scan immediately. So before a radiologist gets involved and we identified your problem, obviously, immediately and said, get him here now. And so they flew you by helicopter. Do you remember the helicopter ride? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was, uh, I didn't like the helicopter ride. <laughs> yeah, it, it's I. Uh, that's understandable because it, it, there's not a lot of room in there. And I'm sure it's uh not super pleasant it's, yeah just being strapped to a board you know you can't see what's going on i didn't really care for them too much yeah that's very normal um, but I, you know i remember the first thing i saw when i came off the helicopter was you oh okay cool yeah. very cool. well i remember the helicopter landing because so i have i have a jeep and i drive with the top off 
I have a picture of the helicopter. I think we might even be able to show some of these things. I have a picture of you landing in the helicopter while I'm driving in. And then I've, uh, I've got that it. picture. You have it? Yeah, I don't. Uh, it was sent to my wife. And I, I've actually we've got that picture. Cool. Very cool. Um, well, I just I thought it was really cool because it really kind of demonstrated as as we go through these little you know uh, stages of your process. It, it kind of just uh, is a nice demonstration of how the system works you know here comes the helicopter and then we get you on the table and uh, what you had was uh, an occlusion of your middle cerebral artery um, but what's interesting about you and why it was all speech and not your uh, right arm or right leg is that it wasn't the main branch it was the branch right after that we call that like the second branch or m2 but your m2 was massive it was almost as big as an m1 uh, the, the first branch the, the main trunk so to you it it was really important to your brain uh and to obviously your speech function and uh we opened it up i think pretty quickly shelby how did we do it what do we do you remember was that a seven minute i'll look it up real quick oh okay i think it was like seven minutes i think it, it was what quick. i recall what was that, Lens? I said I think it was quick. Yeah, yeah, I think. It was yeah, quick. I think it because I think your note was like fourteen minutes after wow. going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so this it was is, like, like just so you can see this, oh. I don't. I know there's like a glare, but that's kind of how it comes across, Ryan. So those are your yeah, images, and then um, like this is the conversation that they can kind of have like texting back and forth. So, yeah. I mean, it's huge. Just like Dr. Beecher said, it, before we, having that technology, it would have been a lot of phone calls back and forth with the moderator. Like it was, it's a lot. So. Without y'all, I don't know where I'd be today. Yeah, I hear you. Well, that's kind of like the benefit of having this technology and having Dr. Beecher able to look at these um images for like the rural communities that don't have as much support he's our expert for this whole region he and dr capuzzo and so it's amazing for people that live in those like in these areas that are just out of reach right just out of reach of us being able to get to them right away but there's a hospital that can begin the treatment is that he can be their doctor in a sense you know by just looking at these images so it's a huge huge deal yeah and actually you know i was able to use that application to send back a picture of you giving a thumbs up to the <laughs> team and they loved it they were so they were so pleased and i showed them the vessel closed and the vessel open um and it was uh i think they, they really appreciated that um what would you find out shelves uh 14 minutes from puncture to recan Oh, okay, still fast. We we brag about how fast we are. That's really good, but we like to be like really good. So, uh, all right, we'll take fourteen. What matters is how you're doing, not not our time. It's fun. Um, you can tell. I hope by just the team here, all of us, our whole team, we love what we do, and uh, we love yes, the sir. impact it has on people's lives. And it, it is. You I mean you guys are the reason we do it, and. Uh, I think this is the most satisfying surgery or procedure that I do uh, because you do have patients such as yourself who get an immediate impact and, and some people get an impact later, uh, but it, it is pretty remarkable to see somebody in such a tough time and then so much better. And, and honestly, uh, you know, we, we should, we should probably do this and celebrate these things more so that, you know, my team and everybody gets to, to see it. Um, I see, you know, you guys in the office uh, usually, and I get to see the improvement. But uh, unfortunately, like the ICU nurses as well, they also don't get to see, you know, the patient always as they make that improvement because not everyone has as dramatic of an improvement right away like you do or you did. Um, but it is, uh, this is why we do what we do. Yeah, I mean, as soon as we came out that night, I was able to talk with everything was fine. You know, I wanted I stayed in ICU, I think, uh, 11 days afterwards, but that was because of heart. It wasn't anything to do with the stroke or the, right. the brain. That's right. Um, that was trying to get my heart back in rhythm. 
Um, I think they had to shop me five times total, three the first time, second, two the second. Uh, they did the uh, rid the uh, medicines and stuff to kind of get it the amiodarone on to get it back in rhythm. And um, the next time they shot shot me, I, it went right back in. It stayed in as far as I know. I think I have one episode since where it jumped back out one time and uh, I didn't have to get shot. It jumped itself back in. And since we had the arrhythmia, I don't think I've had early on. Um, the surgery, I haven't had any more problems with it getting out of rhythm. You had an ablation, right? And I the ablation for November. Chris, tell us what else you've done to um, improve your health since you've been home. Um, I've quit smoking. I haven't smoked since I had this stroke. Um, I've drank, I think one one glass and one mixed drink since. I've lost fifty eight pounds since September. Wow. I've, I've tried to do everything I can to get my, my side of it. Yeah, you know, y'all did what y'all could and it's my my responsibility to do the rest. And I've tried to do that. Um my daughter was here that night when everything happened and that scared me. I don't want ever to her to ever have to see that again. And um trying to do what I can to be around for her. Well, I think by like those changes that you've made, you've like kind of rewrote how they're going to look at things moving forward. You've changed your lifestyle and their lifestyle just because of you changing your lifestyle. So I, I'm, I'm proud of you. I think that it's a hard, hard thing to quit smoking. It's difficult. People struggle with it. It's hard to lose weight. So <clears throat> I'm glad that this horrible thing that happened was a positive thing for you moving forward. And your kids are my what? My wife said 11, that night when the stroke said? was happening, we were trying to get in the car. That She said that's the first thing I was trying to do was light a cigarette to get in the car. And, you know, that bothered me a lot. So, you know, I just threw them down and haven't picked them back up. Good for you. Do you remember being frustrated at not being able to talk before all of this? Yeah, because I just remember... Um, I could tell in my brain the word that I was trying to use, but I could tell that that's not what was coming out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. I could hear that that's not the word that I was trying to say. So my brain was telling me, you know, I, it was coming with the right word, but my mouth was not saying it. And that was very frustrating. Because I, I didn't honestly, nobody told me I was having a stroke until I got to Wilmington. Um, my wife recognized and didn't want to tell me, didn't want me to freak out and stuff. And, um, that whole day before was a normal day. I, that's uh opening day of hunting season here. We had dove hunted all day. Um, for whatever reason, usually we would drink all day that day. Um, I didn't touch any alcohol that day. If I'd have woke up that night and had been drinking all day, I would have probably just chalked it up to being drunk and laid back down. Yeah. But I got up to use the restroom for whatever reason. And. I was just stumbling everywhere and didn't know what was going on. And I lay back down on the bed and somehow I woke her up. And usually she is a super heavy sleeper and wouldn't have even, she woke right up and noticed something wasn't right and came around and she uh, lifted my hands up and then immediately got me up and called the ambulance. We live eight minutes from the hospital. I can have you there immediately. Wow. Well, I'm really glad to hear you uh, called 911 before driving yourself. Cause that's what we always tell people. We always say, don't drive to the hospital. Call nine one one. But <laughs> you know, did he get IV lytics at the other hospital? No, he's out of window. I don't think so. Out of window. Okay. Then they said three minutes out. I was three minutes out of window. Wow. Wow. Are we able to show the? Do we have those pictures? Um. Yeah, we have some pictures, and we'll um share our screen here in a second. Um, we also have a little video that Dr. Beecher took of you. Um, when we were all done. I asked your permission, and you said yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I still, yeah, I remember, I remember being in and out that night, and you know, certain parts and pieces during the surgery, and it, um. It's probably something I'll never forget. So was the team Beecher, Shelby, and Lindsay? Yeah. Can you guys see the screen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, so here's that picture. I guess this is the one you have of Dr. Beecher on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of face am I making? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like four in the morning, so yes. you look a bit concerned. <laughs> Um, and then this is your imaging as well. Um, on the left side where that red arrow is, you can see where that blood clot was sitting. Yep. And on the yeah, right side. That's a great, I mean, that vessel is just as big. Can you use your cursor to kind of point to the, the M1? Yeah, right there. Okay. That's the M1. <laughs> and your vessel just stays that big the whole time. It never gets smaller. It's a massive M2. And then you can see on the other picture, uh obviously how much blood supply downstream there is and uh it yeah it's just awesome i didn't call that a three <laughs> it was 4 a.m okay it looks, it looks like a three hey, ryan me. you can totally use that too dr beecher saying how big your brain is no <laughs> <laughs> you can use that against you know anything your wife has to say <laughs> all right and then I what have would the have happened video if it hadn't have been slide. that big, that large? What say that again? What would have happened if that vessel hadn't have been as large as it was? Would it have went somewhere else and we'd have had more? Yeah, I the it's, arm it's, and the leg. It's tough to say. Probably what would have happened though is that the clot would have been the same size and it wouldn't be able to have gone as far. And you would have had then what we see a little bit more often, which is the, the occlusion earlier and all the blood vessels are gone and you'd still need the same thing if the clot was the same size it's probably what would happen okay this next slide is the video is it weird to see that ryan or have you seen this before too i haven't seen that one it's pretty emotional isn't it yeah it's very emotional that's probably the scariest time i've ever had in my life and um I said to be where I'm at today is a blessing. Got it pretty emotional during the video too. Of course, dear, of course. What's your name again? Christopher Baxley. Alright, well the team at Columbus did a great job getting you to us. Thank you. No problem. Oh, I'll be seeing you. Like it's pretty incredible. Yeah. Because you could not yeah. talk and then you were able to just talk. It's pretty crazy. And it's just a simple word. Yes, I remember that was the hardest. I couldn't even say yes. Yeah. That, that was very, very frustrating. Yeah, yeah, I remember how immediate you started talking and it was amazing. It's cool. It's very cool. It's um it's definitely one of those things that people that have a stroke and they have aphasia, it's just it's so devastating to them because if you could imagine having to carry on with your life as a dad and a husband and, you know, going to work, even if it improved some, it definitely, um, it's definitely a huge, huge obstacle. So, so many things. I hope you bought your wife dinner or bought her some flowers or something like that oh, yeah. because her getting you there was really um, the first step in so many steps of getting you back to where you are today. And she's actually a last last semester RN student as well. She's doing her oh. final trials and getting ready to take her NCLEX in two wow. months. Oh, that's you awesome. Know, this is, it made a big, she's, it helped her a lot. And um, she's done very, very well in nursing school. And it, it's helped her a lot with her just drive to want to do good. And she's so appreciative for y'all as well. It's awesome. Well, listen. County is a great hospital, but we are also a fabulous hospital, and now you have <laughs> plenty of connections here. Thank you for doing this. Really appreciate it. I mean, really, I know it's the least I could do. <laughs> we appreciate it very much. It means a lot. Yeah, you know, I'm. I'm just glad y'all were there that night. And you know, I when I left, they said you know, you've got one of the best in the state is going to be there to meet you. Wow, it's, and it's uh, that that eased my. You know, it made things easier to know, that, you know, uh, the person that was going to be working with me was good at what he does. And the team that he has with him, you know, he's going to have a good team with him as well. I got the and, best team you know, I, probably in the country. Yeah. You know, 
I can't say, I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for y'all. Well, we're really proud of you as well. We're proud of you for doing everything you've done to improve your health and kind of rewrite your story. So congratulations to you. Happy birthday to you. And today's Beecher's Thank birthday. You. So you probably gave him one of the best gifts he could have. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Listen, Ryan, your forties are fabulous. You. So you've got a bunch <laughs> of good years ahead of you. <laughs> you know, people can't believe, you know, when you tell them you're 38 and had a stroke, they don't, they don't, they don't think younger people have a stroke. But um you know, heavy smoker for years, overweight, all the signs were there and I knew to fix them and didn't. So I paid the price for that. But luckily too, I'm man. able to continue a life now afterwards a normal life your story is like i mean it's just remarkable it really is i mean just listening to you say everything you've said it's just i mean you really i mean we should we're going to do everything we can to get your your story out but you know it's just really it's, you should be very proud and all the things all the things you always will i mean you know y'all are just as responsible for me being where i'm at today as i am probably more so um, it takes it takes a lot to do what you've done. I mean, it, it, thank you for your you know your your sentiment towards us, but you know it, it's really impressive to change your life the way you have. Kind of figure I owed y'all and my family that much after everything I put y'all through. Yeah, well, we, <laughs> we appreciate it. You'd be surprised how many recurrent offenders we have. You, you'd be shocked. That was another big determining factor in trying to get things. I look. When I was laying in the hospital that next day, you know, I looked at the recurrent rates and the chances of survival or not having debilitating problems on the second one. I don't want to be there again. Um, Got it. I know the chances of coming out this good after another one are pretty slim. So I do what I can to keep improving my health and do just be everything I can to be healthy. Well, it Fair. sounds like you've got a lot of support also. I do. And you and honestly, you telling this story that that is huge. You showing people what happened and telling them about how this happened to you, like you said, at 38 years old, and you know, your daughter seeing all of this, that changes that makes everybody kind of stand back and think, like, mm -hmm. okay, whoa, we were just dove hunting with him, you know? So yeah. You telling that story is a really, really beneficial thing for county and anybody that'll listen. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any questions? None that I know of. Do um, you think of any or your wife thinks of any or she needs a name to put on her application? You've got four girls sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right, best Thank of luck to you, Ryan. Thank you so much. Thank all of y'all. Thank you.